This is a follow-up video I made after creating a video to showcase my vintage lighter collection and I decided to take some time to talk a little bit about my thoughts about collecting cigarette lighters and maybe provide some insight that other people might find helpful. Um, I've been collecting kind of casually um, off and on for um, the better part of 23 years. Uh, a lot of these cigarette lighters came from flea markets and back in the day they came from eBay. Um, I would say that flea markets are these days uh, the best place to find cigarette lighters. Um, if you're interested in collecting cigarette lighters, that's where I found the best deals um, can be made. Uh, in terms of finding cigarette lighters at flea markets, Obviously, you want to tend to um, seek out the guys that do house cleanouts or basically have a little bit of everything, um, you know, more on the junk end of the spectrum. People who are selling uh, military paraphernalia, old um, pocket watches, uh, barware, those are the guys that are typically going to have some vintage cigarette lighters. Um, when I see a guy in his, you know, late 50s, 60s, um, standing there in a tank top with a sunburn, talking on a cell phone, smoking a cigarette, and yelling at somebody, that's the guy I'm going to try and buy from. And typically he'll have, you know, a collection of more common cigarette lighters, and usually my approach is to... Um, pick out all the good ones, the ones that uh, catch my eye, put them in a box or a basket or whatever he has laying around, um, do some quick math in my head, and then uh, pull out, you know, whatever it is, you know, 40, 60, 80 dollars, um, basically like hand him the money, show him the pile of lighters, and just say, hey, we'll, uh, we'll 80 bucks buy these, and he'll kind of look at the money and say, yeah, give me the money, uh, and I'm on my way. So most of these lighters I've purchased for between, you know, on average, five ten dollars um, I'm not looking to spend a lot of money. I'm just trying to find some interesting pieces to add to the collection. Um, and I, I, I try and change it up a little bit. Um, but then there's a lot of styles that you'll find uh Pretty frequently. For example, Ronson, you know, the aptly named Ronson Standard, uh, the Ronson Princess. You'll come across these a lot. These are um, uh, post military uh, aluminum lighters. Uh, these are from the, you know, the mid 40s to mid 50s. They were made from scrap uh, metal from the war. A lot of these actually have some examples. Um, carved into them that show that, you know, this was dated 1945. It's got a military shield on it. I'm not sure if this is going to come on camera, but you can see that it has some engraving, uh, obviously done by hand. So those always make for interesting, uh, in interesting pieces. These uh, Ronson Whirlwinds, um, also uh, pretty common to find. Back in the day, you could um, get great deals on eBay. Um, now, so nowadays, it's it's harder to do that just because there's so many eyes on them, and people are um, people are getting crazy prices for cigarette lighters. I it blows my mind that so, the um, the prices that some of these cigarette lighters sell for, and obviously the ones that are more rare are going to fetch higher prices. Um, th these are not a, a great example of rare ones. Um, there's some rare ones here. This one, for example. Um, honestly, I couldn't tell you where I got this or what I paid for it. I actually just um, sort of re rediscovered it when I was going through the collection uh, a while back. Um, eBay, you can still find some deals. Um, a good way to find deals on eBay is to actually go through lighters that have sold, um, find a seller that frequently has cigarette lighters, uh, somebody who has like a buy it now price or an, a best offer, 
and then uh, make them an offer and, and see if uh, they're willing to bite. Now, you're usually going to pay more on eBay than you would at flea markets, uh, but you're going to have access to better selection through eBay. Um, antique stores can be can be a good resource for cigarette lighters, but a lot of times these places uh, have high overhead, so you know they, they got to pay the bills and and um, these guys do the research and they feel like they have a pretty good handle on the the you know value of, of some of their cigarette lighters. So it can be hard. Um, some of the more out of the way antique stores, those guys are usually more willing to negotiate. Um, Etsy, uh, surprisingly, has a lot of vintage cigarette lighters. Uh, I've purchased, you know, only a couple through Etsy. I find that those prices, um, you know, it, it's people looking for the guy at the end of the rainbow, or um, more often than not, people don't know what they have, and they think that it's worth a fortune. For example, here's um, a camel cigarette lighter. It's made to look like a vintage cigarette lighter, but this was just a, a little giveaway promotional piece. Uh, in my perspective, it has little to no value. I mean, I've seen these things listed for as much as $50 a piece, which is crazy. Um, I mean, I wouldn't pay, I'd pay less than five bucks for this. Um, Craigslist, you know, I, I think Craigslist can be a good place to find lots of Zippo lighters or somebody who's just kind of, you know, cleaning out, you know, grandpa's basement and they come across his old cigarette lighters. Um, it also depends, I think, on where you are in the country. Um, I live in the suburbs of Massachusetts, not a huge percentage per capita of smokers here. So it's harder to find vintage lighters on Craigslist. That being said, you know, I have, you know, seen a few listed that are interesting, but most of the time it's just, you know, things like this and, uh, you know, other junk that people are trying to get rid of, um, or somebody who, you know, wants crazy prices. Um, so it's not really worth the time. Um, trying to think where else I've managed to find cigarette lighters. Um, you know, yard sales are not a great place to find cigarette lighters from my perspective. Uh, on the other hand, estate sales can be. If um, estate sales where they're doing the whole house clean out, if the person who lived there was elderly uh, and a smoker, they're probably going to have, you know, a, you know, quite possibly a lifetime of cigarette lighters, which could be, you know, five or ten, or it could be a few dozen, depending on, you know, whether they actively were interested in cigarette lighters themselves and, and you know, went and purchased them, or, you know, in the case of, you know, lighters like this, they received them as a gift. Um, so you can have luck there if, um, if you keep your eye on house cleanouts. Sometimes those house cleanouts are hosted by an auction company, and those guys want higher prices, um, you know, to for everything that they're trying to sell for, you know, for the, um, you know, for the owners. Um, there are sometimes junk shops or kind of, um, you know, curiosity shops. I, I've seen a few. Usually, those guys have a few lighters. Uh, oftentimes, they're more more common cigarette lighters. Um, in terms of negotiating, you know, I sort of come at it from the philosophy of, you know, I only have a, a finite budget and I'm trying to maximize that and um, and get the best deals I can. I, uh, I usually try and find a guy who's selling a few cigarette lighters and put together a deal for, you know, for a small lot. Or um, if it's somebody who just, you know, doesn't specialize in cigarette lighters, doesn't um, pay a lot of attention to them. Uh, I feel like I've got a pretty good handle on what I'm willing to pay. And I, I leverage that to try and get the best deal. 
Um, more often than not, if, um, if somebody has crazy prices and they're not willing to negotiate, I'll just walk away because there's so many other places, uh, that you can find lighters at a, at a good bargain price that it, uh, it, you know, you, you have to, you know, think about the value of your time. Um, these are all Zippos, Zippo knockoffs. Um, these are all Zippos that I got for free, uh, at the bar. Um, they would have girls that come around with, uh, bags of Zippo lighters and, you know, it was some promotional thing where you would, um, you know, say that you're a smoker and, and, uh, scan your license and they'd give you one of these. So actually I've got a ton of these, um, a few different styles, just like a interesting promotional thing, not particularly valuable. Um, there are people that mainly focus just on collecting Zippos. Um, Zippos command, from my perspective, crazy, uh, crazy high prices, but you need to have a, a Zippo that is uh, interesting to a collector. Something that's old in the box and mint condition, that's something that somebody's gonna pay, certainly pay a premium for. Um, a lot of these are just brushed chrome, even though they're you know from the 50s, 60s, 70s. If they don't have advertising or things that are interesting to, uh, to collectors, you're probably not going to get more than five, 10 bucks for them. Um, that being said, here's, you know, a military, uh, world war II lighter. These, um, these fetch high prices, um, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, you know, this is just like a silly, I think that's some like anarchist lighter. It's, it's not old. Um, but it was cheap. I probably paid like three bucks for that. And it, it, it did come in the box. The box is back there. Um, in terms of different styles of lighters, um, you know, I like to have a little bit of everything to me. Um, condition is not super critical. All, as long as you, you're buying a lighter that has all the parts, um, you can usually clean them up. Um, you know, it's actually interesting. A lot of people have YouTube channels where they're, um, restoring old stuff. A lot of times that old uh, stuff is a vintage cigarette lighter, and it's amazing what they do. Um, my plan is to sort of, you know, purchase these, um, clean them up, and ultimately, you know, sell them, you know, when the time is right. Um, one thing to keep an eye out for is people selling uh, lighter parts. Those, uh, I think, are going to... Um, just increase in value as they become harder to find. Uh, they're certainly not making these old parts anymore. Uh, so if you can fix uh, a lighter that you find inexpensively, then uh, you're certainly adding value to that lighter. I mean, I personally have a whole drawer of lighters that are missing parts, and um, I'll admit very few lighters have left this drawer um, complete um, uh, you know, after having gone in here, missing parts. Um, one thing I've always tried to stay away from, um, from a collecting perspective was butane lighters. Uh, they have a lot of rubber seals and gaskets and the gas leaks out and they degrade over time. Um, from a value standpoint, I haven't seen any of these really increase in value very much. Um, even these are some older butane lighters. I just like the um, the mechanics and the reliability of, uh, of wick lighters because I feel like uh, they can be restored easily and, uh, and run forever. I'm trying to think if there's, take a few notes. Um, in terms of restoration, it, if you know what you're doing, you can definitely restore beat up old lighters and, and add value. Um, one thing to be careful of, uh, especially with Zippos, is knockoffs or, um, you know, sort of gray market Zippos. I've seen a lot of Zippos that look really nice um, being sold from Japan, unlike anything I've seen 
you know, for sale in the U.S. I don't really understand, um, you know, the Japanese Zippo market. Uh, personally, I stay away from those. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of value, uh, eBay, I think, really sets the the high water mark for uh, the value of any cigarette lighter because you've got so many different eyes on them, and uh, you reach you know people who are actively uh, going after Zippo lighters. Uh, I do have a lot of books that I use to find um, to find out about different styles. Um, you know, I'm certainly interested in the history and, and sort of pop culture, um, rise and fall of the cigarette lighter. So some of these books go into those in more detail. Um, so without getting too long winded, if it's not too late, those are some, you know, some thoughts that I have about cigarette lighter collecting uh, right there that represented the uh, the pocket lighters the drawers down below are more table lighters uh, maybe i'll get into those in a different video um, i think that the uh, pocket lighters have a a little more cachet to them um, a little piece of pocket art so i decided to talk about those in this video but um, hey thanks for watching uh, let me know your thoughts if you're a lighter collector or if you have any questions and I'd be glad to help out in any way.